Good day and welcome to the Mastech Limited Q4 FY23 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Asha Gupta from ENY LLP. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Pajan. Good evening to all of you. Welcome to the Q4 and full year FY23 of Matrix Limited. Business and presentation have already been made to you, and you can also view them on the website at www.matrix.com. To take us through the results today and answer your questions, you have the top The audio is unclear from your line. Please check. Sorry. Sorry. Take us through the results today. And to answer your question, we have the top management of Matrix Limited, uh, Matrix Limited represented by Hilal Chandrana, Gloro CEO, and Arun Agrawal, Google CFO. Hilal, we start the call with this subject. Uh, sorry, and you 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 audio, the, um, the audio is unclear from your line. Am I audible now? Uh, the audio is unclear. Hello? It is, uh, it is audible now, yes. Okay, so uh, sorry for that. Um, to take us to the uh, results today and answer your question, we have top management of Mastex represented by Hiral Chandrana, global CEO, and Arun Agarwal, global CFO. Hiral will start the call with the business update, which will be then followed by Arun, providing the financial update for the quarter. As usual, I would like to remind you that anything that is said on this call that reflects any outlook for the future or which can be construed as forward looking statement must be viewed in conjunction with the risks and uncertainties that we face. This risk and uncertainties are included but not limited to what we have mentioned in the prospectus filed with the SEBI and subsequent annual report that you can find it on our website. Having said that, I will now hand over the call to Hiral Chandrana. Over to you, Hiral. All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, are you able to hear me okay? Yes, sir. Can you confirm? Okay, great, fantastic. <laughs> um, so I'll cover three things, uh, quick financial highlights for Q4 and uh, FI23, some business updates on uh, the quarter as well as the full year, and then some uh, quick updates on the FI24 strategic priorities and outlook. We'll then hand it over to Arun for uh, more detailed financial updates. So for the quarter four that ended, we grew at 7.7% quarter on quarter from Q3 to Q4 on an INR basis and 5.3% quarter on quarter on a constant currency basis. Our operating EBITDA for the quarter was 17.7%. For so the full year, FI23, we grew at 18.5% on a revenue basis, constant currency. Our order book backlog, which is the 12 months order book backlog that we closely track, grew 17.2% year on year. And our full year operating EBITDA was in the same range of about 17.8%. In terms of quarter four, we are pleased with some good deal momentum as well as progress on the multiple strategic priorities that we've been outlining for the last year or so. I'll share with you some of the highlights and then move into the FI24 upload. In FI23 as a whole, we had some challenging uh, quarters, particularly in specific areas that we were discussing that. And just on the party count uh, in sorry, the UK, you, sir, the audio uh, is sir? now breaking. It's unclear, sir. Okay, are you able to hear me now? Now it is better. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so for for FY23 as a whole, for the full year, 
we had some challenging uh, couple of quarters that we've discussed in the past with respect to NHS, with respect to a uh, couple of areas within the Oracle space. We are pleased to inform that there has been good progress that has been made on multiple uh, aspects of the business. And some of that is reflecting in the Q4 results as well. In addition to the business growth quarter on quarter, we are very happy to have received the great places to work certification, as well as our attrition is 21% on a 12 month basis, last 12 months which is a drop of 700 bits from a year ago. We also received some recognition externally from the market from various industry analysts, including a recent recognition from ISG as a booming 15 player in the global system integration space. We also struck a partnership with an AI company called Nettail, which provides AI-based competitive intelligence solutions in the retail and consumer industry. In terms of our business in UK, we had solid in-quarter execution. A key win is in one of our premier accounts in, in UK where we manage borders, trade, biometrics, immigration, asylum services. We had uh, developed multiple solutions and engineered multiple systems for them in the past. We've extended that to a biometric program, which helps automate multiple processes for students and immigrants to legally move in. One of the wins that we've reported last quarter is a large manufacturing company in the US, where we have been awarded complete transformation of their business processes from finance, HR, supply chain, powered by Oracle Cloud. We're excited about this particular win in addition to the overall value of the win being more than 5 million, because one of our non-linear solutions called Warehouse 360 was also deployed as part of the program. In the Salesforce business, We've had good momentum in healthcare and public sector. One of the interesting wins though has been in the financial services sector, which is a payment cards company, where they're automating multiple parts of their merchant force powered by Salesforce, and also taking responsibility for cloud operations and application development of new solutions. Another win that we had was in the managed services space in one of the healthcare clients in the US, where our approach to managed services has been cloud enhancement services, where we take over the run and maintain part of the business. We've had some interesting wins in the Middle East as well as in Australia. Some of the success that we've had in the Oracle space in our UK councils, state and local government councils, have now been deployed and replicated in Australia, where we see good potential to leverage those learnings and have new wins. There's multiple other um, you know, wins and delivery successes and go lives that we've had in the quarter. To kind of put things into perspective in FI23, we had uh, account mining as one of the key priorities and uh, while we underestimated the time it would take uh, to make that successful, it is starting to show results in pockets of certain accounts, reflected in our growth of greater than 1 million accounts and greater than 3 million accounts. We have also made a couple of key leadership updates, which we've announced earlier in the quarter in Q4. Pramila joined us as COO of Mastic, and Vijay Iyer joined us as America's president. Both of them have spent a few weeks now in, in the system and have settled down well. We will uh, invite them for future calls so that they can give their updates as well. As it relates to uh, margins, we continue to put focus on operating efficiencies, utilizations, 
you would have seen progress in those metrics which is now reflected in our growth in revenue uh, with minimum headcount gross addition increases because we've been able to deploy and make some of the billable uh, make some of the freshers and associates billable in the last one or two quarters this is part of our strategy where we want to continue to improve uh, loss margins so that we can reinvest back into the business as it relates to fi24 moving into the next fiscal year we are already into uh, day 19 of the new fiscal year we feel that the changes and the fundamental uh, improvements that we have made to look at multiple aspects of the business right from recruiting to account mining to marketing to capability development uh, are starting to you know yield results and ensure progress while the macro environment still remains uncertain there's still caution among customers in terms of deals and decisions we've continued to see our order backlog grow and we continue to see our pipeline at a healthy level our sales force business which is the acquisition that we made last year has delivered almost 118% of the plan of the acquisition plan In Q4, it is typically a seasonally deep quarter for MSC, but the outlook for the business and the momentum and pipeline that we have in our Salesforce business remains strong. UK business has shown tremendous resilience and in-quarter execution. We believe the foundational pieces that we have put in US will also reflect in strong quarter-on-quarter growth and full-year growth in FY24. one of the businesses which has really to some extent uh, positively surprised us is the middle east business even though we reduced the number of accounts we actually saw, uh, saw the revenue growth um, you know uptick in that geography with good order book momentum and well as good output uh, going forward in addition to our other business in east and australia we are starting to see good momentum in digital services particularly in specific areas like service now microsoft and snowflake all in all we feel that while there have been challenges in fy23 we are closing on a very strong note in q4 with a good foundation to build on and demonstrate industry leading growth and above industry averages into fy24 With that, I'll pass it on to Arun, and we'll be happy to answer questions uh, after that. Thank you, Ram. Uh, a very warm welcome to everyone on the call. While date containing much more detailed information about our financial performance and key uh, metrics has already been circulated, I will reflect upon key highlights, and uh, we can thereafter get into Q&A uh, to have a specific question answered. As a key highlight, our operating revenue stood at 709 crores for the quarter, reflecting 7.7% quarter-on-quarter and 22% year-on-year growth in INA terms. In content currency, we are expecting quarter-on-quarter growth of 5.3%. Growth is led by strong execution, as Hiral alluded to, by UK, followed by Middle East, across secured government or oracle business. We have seen good order booking across geography. As a result, our 12-month order backlog is now $218 million, which is up by 5.2% quarter-on-quarter and 22% year-on-year. In in constant currency terms, it's 17.2% year-on-year. We added 28 clients during the quarter. It is across verticals and across geographies. Our acquisition of MHT continues to do better than acquisition. Similarly, we should continue to expand us while we are closing. Cross sell and co-sell opportunities. A lot of integrated deals, and the momentum is building up. Our operating EBITDA stood at 17.7 percent for the quarter, an increase of 40 bits quarter on quarter. It is led by improved operating levers and currency, while we continue to invest in building capabilities in line with our three-year strategy. Our PAT stood at 72.6 crore, up 8.2 percent quarter on quarter. Our gross cash was 270 crores versus 325 crores in December 
During the quarter, we completed acquisition of second tranche of CCPS, paid installment of loan as it was due, and also disbursed interim dividend. Our borrowing stood at 371 crores as of 31st March, reduced from 397 crores as of December 2022. Headphones stood at 522 at the end of quarter, reflecting a net reduction of 65 headcount. Consequently, our utilization improved by 450 bips quarter on quarter. With this, I would like to thank you all and open the house for Q&A, and uh, we can get into much more details. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use the handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Reminder to the participants, Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. <laughs> First question is from the line of Vedic Sarkar from Unify Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, gentlemen, uh, good evening and uh, congrats on a good consolidated quarter. A uh, couple of questions. Uh, the numbers on Oracle uh, indicate continued softness, right? So what, what what exactly is going on here? Because our base isn't large enough to warrant softness, even if there is some kind of a slowdown at an OE level. Uh, uh, you know, uh, do, do you think this is temporary? Uh, will Oracle pull back? Uh, you know, some kind of commentary that will help. Uh, and uh, back to the UK, is there reason to believe that uh, the acceleration we've seen in Q4 uh, will continue for the rest of the year because, you know, uh, we're coming out of a very soft period, so very healthy acceleration there? Uh, or, or would you caution us saying that, no, this is a positive blip and uh, execution in the UK is something that we really need to see on a day-to-day -day basis? Uh, and I'll just close this with one question on here before I come back uh, uh, on the financials, which is on the US here. You know, the lack of growth that we've seen here now constantly, uh, you know, what is this really a function of? Is, is it the function of a lack of referenceability? Because frankly, the cost takeout ecosystem that we're hearing anecdotally is, is, is still very strong. Uh, our, our base isn't really large enough to kind of warrant softness, uh, even if the environment is such a soft. Uh, you know, what is it? Or, or, you know, does it really warrant a better investment than a go-to-market level? Uh, so, yeah, I'll leave you with these broad three questions and I'll come back for later. Thank you. All right, thanks, uh, Bhadak. <clears throat> the um, Oracle business actually grew for us. Um, while you might see some uh, uh, small dip in terms of percentages, from a quarter-on-quarter -quarter perspective, uh, that business grew. Um, so while we had seen some level of softness in the previous quarter, uh, the momentum both on deal wins as well as on uh, revenue growth has been positive. Uh, the, uh, the discretionary spend and projects and implementation uh, will be under scrutiny uh, increased scrutiny in terms of uh, investment, but uh, we've also won uh, new implementations and managed services deals in Q4 that gives us uh, confidence that uh, the digitization and cloudification and movement to the SaaS platforms will continue to remain and customers are trying to get more ROI from those investments. In terms of UK, we did get the benefit of uh, higher number of working days in uh, Q4 as well as currency uh, help as well. Uh, but as I've mentioned in the past, right, while the environment as a country is volatile, our business is still resilient, uh, particularly in the secure government services, our core public sector services. And, and the work that we continue to do is of national uh, critical importance. So. Um, I, I wouldn't call it a blip. Uh, there is good uh, progress in diversifying some of our presence in, in UK, uh, and we, we, we see uh, potential going forward as well. Um, <clears throat> US has been disappointing. Um, you know, if you look at some of the 
uh, account discussions and uh, investments that we've made and uh, some of the biz, uh, delays and positions that we've seen. We did get impacted by a significant drop in the Oracle cloud commerce. This is the cloud commerce, e-commerce space, which Oracle deprioritized uh, since we got it back. Uh, but we reached the bottom of that and negated uh, all the uh, dips that we saw from that space. Uh, so we feel confident that uh, some of the changes that we have made in converting some of those accounts into managed services, diversifying our uh, business into data and uh, app dev areas in some pockets of customers, as well as uptick in the uh, Oracle cloud space and the Salesforce synergy. Uh, that U.S. is uh, set for a growth uh, going into S524. So uh, hopefully, by the that answers. Uh, happy to take more later, but uh, that's a good sure, sure. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, I, I gather probably U.S. will come back, but on Oracle, uh, Hiral on Q4 of last fiscal, you know, Q424, uh, our run rate was 27 half million dollars, and you know we're, we're struggling at the 23, 24 million for the last two quarters. So you know there might have been a sequential growth, but you know we had to clear that base, right? Uh, so, you know, my, my question was more forward-looking. Uh, is there enough ammunition for us to believe that we'll, uh, you know, go back to at least half the pace of growth that we've seen in the Oracle ecosystem? Or uh, would you caution us saying that, you know, uh, I mean, you know, the growth rate, what we probably delivered this quarter uh, is more indicative of what is to come. I'm just trying to understand, you know, the uh, quantum of growth that one can expect here. No, we expect both Oracle and Salesforce, uh, both those uh, which which constitutes a reasonable portion, you know, anywhere from 45 to 47 percent of our overall business. Um, we expect both those to continue to grow higher than our company average, and uh, both of them um, will have have deal momentum and order book backlog uh, that gives us confidence of uh, them growing faster than our company. Sure, sure. Even from a disclosure perspective, you know, if I go to request you from the next quarter to probably, you know, try and disclose Salesforce also. I mean, just or at least call out the number uh, separately. It'll and plus place your journey in context. Uh, I'll just end with one last question on bookkeeping. Uh, you know, are we done with the entire uh, payouts and dilution that was due to the promoters of Vivosis? Or, uh, or, I mean, was, was this the last year? Or, or will September of next year be the last term? So we have done with two tranche. One more is pending, but uh, that will happen in the October of 2023. That is, that's the last. Okay, time. you know because your minority transition was almost you know 100% this quarter, so I, I, I was just a bit confused. Uh, and on margins, our aspiration was to come back to 20% uh, at EBITDA level, right? Um, uh, you know that was an aspiration for the next year. Right? You know, given the cost and the revenue environment, uh, is there any change in the aspiration? Are we on track? Uh, Broad to mention that. Yeah, but as, as we mentioned earlier, high teams was our aspiration. Uh, we continue to aspire into that, but I think we are very close to 17.7% and -7 full year this is 17.8. Right? We believe that that's a good range to, to operate around and we want to operate in that range. So definitely in the long term, we want to come back to the higher, higher level term profile as we start achieving our growth targets. Okay, all the best. I'll be in touch. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mohit Jain from Anandrati. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, so most of the questions are on the cost side. Uh, so one is uh, there was this steep increase in employee expenses this quarter versus last quarter. So is there a specific hike which was given during the quarter or uh, because headcount has declined? So one is that. Second, in terms of subcon, uh, like where are we currently in the overall scheme of things and how should we see that uh, as we move ahead? Uh, in terms of percentage or absolute numbers, wherever you are comfortable with. Sure, uh, uh, Mohit. Uh, yes, uh, there is an increase in uh, overall, you know, comp cost, but uh, again, there are multiple factors into it. One is the currency conversion also has led to some impact as we are getting advantage into revenue. The same, you know, it gets reflected into the cost IMA conversion as well. So that's one. Second is while headcount has gone down, but that's more like a month end of order in number, right, which you see. But uh, more of the decline has happened on the uh, later part of the month, uh, which uh, the cost annually has come into the into the PNL. And certain <laughs> other other initiative as we continue to invest into you know right talent, uh, having those uh, digital niche talents is very critical for for our kind of work. 
uh, some of the talent where the count goes down, but when you hire them onshore, and you have seen onshore offshore mix also going up because as UK growth comes and uh, more in the secure government space, that leads to you know higher higher cost uh, in terms of overall pain, and that means the rates are also better. So so margin is protected, but uh, in terms of absolute number, you see the cost. That's one part. Similarly, in the subcontractors as well, uh, since uh, some portion of our work in the secure government space need uh, security clear resources and some of those resources are not available into the employment market and you have to get them first in the security clear market under subcontractors and gradually start converting them into the employment into the environment to the point of yours are we comfortable with our subcontractors percentage to the overall answer is no there is a scope of improvement and that's one of the lever which we are working on to to improve our uh, gross margin and the avatar uh, profile of the company so right now the subcon cost would be sitting in other expenses. Uh, is that correct? Yes. So some of the as we move ahead, we should see some of the other expenses getting converted into employee benefit as you translate some of the subcons or convert some of them into employees. Absolutely. Okay, and the other two are related to revenues. Uh, now one is this growth in BFSI slash professional services. So you spoke about one deal win as well. So have we ramped up or should we expect the current growth in BFSI vertical to continue? And what is it driven by? So that's one. And second on UK health. So this particular revenue number was not moving for some time. Now do you see stabilization and for 24, therefore, uh, should we expect more growth to be driven by UK health? So Mohit, uh, the financial services sector is not currently a broad-based sector for us, as you know. Um, we do have a few good accounts in, in UK and a couple of accounts in, in US, uh, and then a few accounts in Middle East. So uh, it's, uh, it's still sizable, but, but not one of our biggest. This particular account is a very large uh, organization, US headquartered organization, where uh, we have seen uh, some interesting momentum and, and uh, deal wins. Um, but uh, but it is not something that uh, is across the bo uh, board in the industry as such for us, right? As, as of right now, it is more account specific. Um, so 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 that's as far as the uh, uh, so the ramp up should we assume that uh, you guys have ramped up reasonably in in fourth quarter? Should we assume that this ramp up in BSI will happen in one Q two Q as well? Yeah, we, we, we club, I think, some, uh, yeah, it, it's kind of ramped up, but we club a couple of uh, professional services uh, uh, industry and accounts into that into that cluster as well. So it's a combination of uh, core financial services as well as some professional services. Uh, but that, that's uh, ramped up. I mean, we see selective opportunities in that sector, uh, but it is in a few set of accounts, right, that, that we have. Uh, as far as health, in UK, um, and particularly the one large account that we have, um, we still see uncertainty in terms of uh, the organization and the changes that they have. But uh, we have seen uh, a bottoming in terms of our uh, position out in that account. Uh, we have actually won a few deals as communicated earlier, but uh, the organization has decided not to ramp them up those are still potential uh, possibilities for the future. But going into FY24, we've taken a conservative view on uh, UK health. We want to make sure that uh, uh, with a little bit of a reset on, on the baseline and look at specific areas. There's a very detailed strategy that the team has put together. Uh, and uh, if there is an uptick in terms of opening up of spend by NHS, then we would benefit from it. Uh, but we've taken by design a conservative view. Uh, on the other hand, we see a uh, tremendous potential going forward in FI24 from both US and Middle East healthcare. Uh, so that is one area that we have invested in, uh, particularly with Oracle's acquisition of Cerner and our own capabilities within the Salesforce ecosystem in um, you know, delivering payer and pay wider solutions. Uh, Banner Health was a great example of a customer where there's a case study uh, in the market which is vetted by the customer and sales force. Uh, similarly, we are very strong in senior living, acute care, home care, uh, and delivering some really interesting programs. So we do see uh, healthcare, while we've seen the dip because of uh, the one NHS account that we have in UK, but as a whole, that's an important industry for us. 
and we expect that to grow significantly as a whole uh, in the cycle. And just a clarification, did I get it right that Oracle is 45-47% of the business? Was that the comment or? No, no, uh, no, Mohit. Uh, Oracle and Salesforce put together combined is about uh, 45. 45-47. And Oracle is what you disclose as Oracle Cloud. That is where it is sitting, the 29% number. Or will it be a cross-service line? There is, there is some across the lines because there's some elements of uh, CX and elements of data as well. Okay, so Oracle is slightly higher than 29 and total the two tech is around 45 for you. All right, sir. Thank you very much. And all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ravi Menon from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, gentlemen, good numbers. Uh, thank Congratulations on that. Uh, uh, I want to ask you about uh, the U.S. Uh, government business. Uh, that's shown good traction when you described how uh, the uh, Herb Ministries uh, Customs and uh, yeah, that's ramping up well. Of the other parts, are there any uh, indications of new programs starting? That's the first question. And second, in the U.S., uh, you know, it's flat uh, quarter on quarter, and uh, I think last uh, quarter we had won a deal uh, to start an offshore development center for a client. Uh, so I was expecting to see some of that ramp up. Uh, is that, has that got delayed, uh, or you know, is that already in the numbers? Thanks. <laughs> Um, so, Ravi, just your first question, um, uh, your line was not fully clear, but your first question was related to state and local government in the U.S.? Uh, did I get that right? Uh, I know, uh, you know, it was about the uh, U.K. government business, uh, you know, outside of NHS. U.K. UK government. Yes. And sorry, um, what was the specific question on the first part on the UK government? Uh, yeah, so you you said that there are, you know you started a new biometrics program, uh, but is that how is yeah, the yeah. pipeline looking there uh, beyond this? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. right. So um, no, thanks, Sir. So 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 um, UK government um, and and you know if you leave NHS uh, aside for a second, uh, the secure government services, right? Uh, we um, have been participating in some very large frameworks, as as you know, um, and some of those frameworks um, do take time in terms of ramp up. Uh, however, uh, we have a seat on the table. Uh, while there are multiple vendors in some of those frameworks, uh, we believe that there is certain market share that we can continue to gain right through the course of uh, the next uh, one or two years in those frameworks. These are very very large uh, you know opportunities. Um, there is. Um, uh, a diversification of our presence that we have continued to make uh, because we had few large institutions that uh, we work with out there, uh, particularly three or four, uh, which have continued to uh, you know, show growth. But, but we're trying to also make sure that we win new opportunities, right, in, in police protection, uh, in some of this biometrics program that I mentioned earlier. Uh, in the workforce and uh, pensions, uh, DWP as an example. So there are certain uh, areas that we are trying to diversify outside of the base that we already have. Um, also, our state and local government in uh, business in, in UK, uh, uh, where we work with about 29 to 30 councils, uh, is, is still uh, you know a sizable presence for us, and and uh, you know we continue to. Specifically, Oracle work there today, but there's an opportunity to cross-pollinate uh, with uh, other platforms. We've seen interest in uh, Microsoft, for example, um, <clears throat> as well as uh, AWS and Salesforce in pocket of UK public sector. The last thing I'll say in UK public sector uh, is that uh, central government, while we have a very good presence on the digital engineering side of things, um, Oracle is uh, Oracle as a company and as a business does a lot of work with the central government. So we see an opportunity, which is a little bit more medium term, uh, of taking our Oracle cloud story uh, as the government modernizes and moves to the cloud uh, in the central government space. Uh, from the area that from a pipeline build perspective, uh, some of those are longer cycles, as you know. So we have to uh, seed 
some of the, the investments and skills with the KDK resources. Um, so, so hopefully that, maybe that answers that part of the question. Thank you. Yeah. And as far as the health uh, deal that you are referring to, uh, that has ramped up uh, to some extent. It is uh, one of the blues that we had communicated <coughs> in the last quarter. In fact, um, that particular account, um, we are seeing uh, new areas that, that uh, the customer is interested in, in, in the data space. And uh, you know, we, we believe that, uh, like I said, uh, blue, the blues in the US in particular, uh, is a good opportunity for us to replicate that success that we have with that particular one. So, so uh, there's no issue with that particular uh, account. In fact, it's a good opportunity. Um, Thank you. And just a uh, longer term question on the Oracle side. Yeah, I thought that uh, the work that he was did was very project oriented, and you know, we would uh, be able to uh, well, do a lot of them, but then at a constant uh, treadmill of projects that we are on. Uh, has that changed, uh, or you know, how would we see that uh, you know, your Oracle business? You were talking about that uh, growing above company average. Is that uh, predicated on you know, getting a new pipeline of larger deals, or are we moving uh, to a more annuity oriented model through that? Yeah, so a really good question, Ravi. Uh, both, both those are true. Uh, <clears throat> we wanted to make sure that our dependency on pure implementation and projects is uh, uh, you know is limited right i mean in, in the sense that some of those deal cycles have taken longer we have one actually our average deal size in the oracle space has grown uh, in in q4 uh, having said that like you rightly said uh, last three four quarters we've made a shift by design in having more managed services and annuity work now those come with three years uh, deal time frame, so the, the ACV values of that uh, might be lower, but, but having said that, it did uh, does establish stickiness uh, for us to continue and mine those accounts, which is a key part of our strategy. So, so while we continue to see projects and implementations, but our mix is definitely changing significantly uh, towards the combination of projects and managers in the other space. In fact, the work that we've run in the Middle East uh, has a high degree of uh, annuity and managed services uh, as an example. So, so yeah, it's a combination of the two. Great, thank you. Uh, one last question, if I may, uh, you know, broad, uh, on the U.S. environment, uh, we've been hearing that there have been projects uh, put on hold. Uh, customers are starting to uh, show some reluctance to come into CapEx. Uh, are you starting to see any of that? Uh, and you know, given your custom base is a little bit uh, more smaller. Uh, companies, uh, you know, would they be more at risk uh, in this environment? Yeah, I mean, we in fact had uh, in two quarters back, right, uh, pointed out um, that, that there are certain delays and there are certain uncertainties. I mean, in Q4 in particular, the quarter gone by, we've not seen any orders or any um, ramp downs as, as such in terms of new projects. Uh, but deal decisions uh, are definitely taking longer. Um, and, and, and in some cases, um, you know, uh, quite as long, right, that we might have seen in the past. Uh, but a couple of wins that we announced, uh, there's an interesting, um, you know, uh, City of Hempstead win that we announced. Uh, again, these are deals which took uh, two months longer than we anticipated. They win them. Um, I think they will con we'll continue to see that uncertainty, right? Uh, many of the investments are going right up to the CEO or even to the board uh, in terms of approval cycles. And so um, that, I think, is, is a trend that we'll see at least for the next two to three quarters. Uh, but what we've done is we've put strong um, uh, account managers in, in some of our key accounts. Uh, while we need to do more work in that space, uh, but we do see a mining opportunity in our in some of our existing accounts, and uh, also strengthening the value proposition that we take to our clients. Uh, combination of our functional architecture and industry knowledge, and putting that together in the context of the the customer, uh, and 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 helping uh, you know customers save money instead of just spend money. So uh, models where we can actually modernize but also optimize at the same time. 
is, is what we're taking to some of our existing clients. Uh, but but I think the the uh, the caution uh, in our customers uh, or industry level will continue to remain right in the next couple of conversations. Uh, Thank you so much. Best luck. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Chandra from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Yeah. Thanks, go ahead. Yeah. Yes, sir, and thanks for the opportunity. So my uh, my question is on the NHS recovery. So you mentioned that uh, we have seen recovery in the NHS account. So if you can throw some more light on uh, you know, how the how the NHS merger that was happening uh, has it been you know, like completed, and also you know the recovery that we have seen was at the end of the you know at the at the end of the quarter, or we have seen the full quarter impact of NHS recovery, and also in terms of the contract that we had won earlier with NHS. Was the you know, was the merger? Has there been any changes in the contract structuring, or uh, we are just seeing the ramp of the existing contract that we have on? Yeah. So Amit, uh, thanks for the question. I I, uh, I just wanted to clarify in case uh, there was some miscommunication earlier. So we've definitely seen growth in our secure uh, government services in in UK, uh, but uh, that is not necessarily NHS. Uh, uh, recovery or, or NHS specific uh, growth or recovery. We uh, um, we continue to see some uncertainty in the leadership and the structure of NHS and some of the merger and the integration uh, that they're going through, right? And that's the point I was trying to make earlier. And we've taken a conservative view of going into S524 uh, on related to NHS, right? Uh, we feel that it is bottomed out uh, in terms of you know our exposure, but uh, but there is still uncertainty, right? So, uh, but but our growth uh, and and uh, you know the last that we saw is not necessarily from NHS, it's actually from our uh, rest of the secure government services, right? Uh, work that we do in Okay, and uh, on the on the I'm sorry um, to interrupt you, sir. The audio is unclear from your line. Uh, please use the handset mode. Hello, is it clear now? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, Hiral, on the on the investment that we made on the UK private uh, uh, side, so you know, uh, obviously we are seeing benefits of it. But what kind of growth uh, we are expecting from the UK private segment, especially because you know financial services uh, and and obviously on the retail side, and also in terms of investments, uh, are we through with the investments on the UK private and also? You know, on the on the US side, we have done some restructuring there. So, you know, post Vijay coming in, are we are we going to continue with the same strategy, or are we are are we are we are we going to see some change in strategy there in the US? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, UK private sector, um, we uh, the team has done a, a big job in defending some of the real estate uh, in the previous quarter. And once we reached certain level of stabilization uh, in the middle of the year, we started to see more deals and uptick in incrementally growing, right? And some of that is reflecting in, in the numbers as well, like you said, uh, Amit. Um, we uh, still see that as a, uh, a growth area for FI24. But if I relatively compare uh, that to some of the other areas of growth, uh, for example, the UK uh, secure government, uh, the Americas as a whole, uh, or our sales force and Oracle business as a whole, um, we believe that those are bigger opportunities for us, right? While uh, we will grow in UK private sector, but uh, it's, it's not in necessarily in the top three priorities, right, for us. Um, the uh, U.S. strategy uh, has undergone some tweaks and, and change, um, particularly as it relates to the environment that we're in and some of the customer voice uh, that, that we're hearing. As we go deeper into some of our existing accounts, uh, there's definitely more cost savings and cost takeout opportunities. And uh, we're making sure that our value proposition of uh, modernizing, uh, cloudifying, as well as 
you know, transforming experiences in the customer journey is combined together with the cost optimization pitch uh, that we're taking to customers. So that would be one call out. A much more deeper focus on uh, account mining. And so is doubling down on uh, in in US in particular, where we see opportunities in providers, payers, and providers, uh, both in Oracle and in the Salesforce space, uh, and to some extent in the big data space as well. So those would be the three call outs. Um, I think that the cost uh, savings element combined in that in our value proposition uh, would, would be one uh, element that we've updated right in the last few months. Okay, so thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the question queue. The next question is from the line of Praveen Redi from Naredi Investment. Please go ahead. Thank you very much to give me this opportunity. Sir, when we analyze the result, when banking margin from employees cost and other expenses, how you deal in current year uh, about all these uh, expenses in margin? Again, as, as we mentioned, uh, the margin, if you see a bit of profile of the company, is broadly 17.7% kind of a range. Right? So, uh, again, uh, the cost will obviously be like, uh, the cost increase pressure will always be there, but that's how you manage between multiple operating levers and ever alluding into subcontractor mix, which we spoke about. We have we have been talking about the utilization of other levers. So, again, it's a combination. Some costs will go up, but there are certain levers which will pull out. And uh, and thereafter, endeavor is to maintain the margin within the range. Okay. And order book uh, backlog uh, 1,794 crore. Can you bifurcate in US, UK, and other territories? We we don't give that uh, geography wise breakup, but that's that's for the full company, and that's a committed order which we have to be executed over next twelve months. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Zubair from Mondrian Investment Partners. Please go ahead. Thank you. A couple of questions from my side, please. Uh, firstly, it would be kind of just a ballpark number on the organic growth for the quarter and for the full year. Because obviously, we've had some sort of M&As during Q1, Q2. And secondly, what should we be expecting on the debt side of things? You know, do we repay or do we take on some more for further M&A? Those two questions from my side, please. <laughs> on the debt, go ahead, go ahead, Arun. I'll let Arun answer the debt and I'll come back to the, to the other question. Sure. And again, sure, sure. It, uh, the rate which we have in the books uh, carries the repayment plan and maybe efficient cash flows, you know, uh, to take care of it. There's no uh, no further plan to raise any debt unless we get into any inorganic activity. Uh, but as, as an operating uh, operating uh, requirement, we don't see any debt requirement out there. And we'll continue to discharge debt liabilities. There are certain debts which will get discharged over this year. Certain certain part of the debts which we took for the purpose of MST acquisition will get discharged over the period of next three years. Okay. Thank you, Aaron. And and, uh, and and are you able to share us? Okay, because it seems like the feedback is the voice is not fully clear. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, I was asking about the organic growth. So the company has achieved for the full year and for the quarter, because obviously numbers are very strong. Uh, but for just comparison for like for like, or compared to previous quarter last year, I just do want to understand what what has the company done on a more organic basis. Sure, sure. No, you're able to hear my my voice, okay, right? Uber? Oh, I can, yes, yes. I, I could clear sometimes, but it's okay, yes. unclear, sir. In between, it's getting unclear. Okay, yeah. I'm not sure why we are very close to the mic, and uh, uh, it's unfortunate. Um, but but let me let me answer the question. Um, so, so um, like I mentioned earlier, uh, the MST and the Salesforce acquisition has delivered uh, above, uh, you know, plan and, and exceeded our uh, expectations, uh, both on revenue 
as well as on order book uh, for the FY23 uh, time frame. Um, as you know, it's about eight months of uh, uh, acquisition uh, in terms of uh, reflected in the numbers that we reported. Um, in, in terms of uh, Q4 in particular, um, like I mentioned earlier, we, uh, we've seen historically for the last three, four years that uh, this particular quarter is a, is a slower quarter uh, with, with MST, with the seasonality. Uh, so essentially, uh, you know, our Q4 growth uh, has come uh, from organic and it's an apple to apple comparison, as you know, from Q3 to Q4. So um, going forward into uh, FY24, uh, we believe that the order book and deal momentum from the Salesforce business continues to be strong, uh, and and uh, we will uh, uh, see uh, good year-on-year -year growth on the Salesforce business as well. Uh, in Q4, the the quarter that just went by, we uh, it was an apples to apples, and it was uh, you know a significant part of it was uh, organic growth. Uh, uh, thank you, Ral. What I meant was year-on-year, like, uh, -year, so obviously from a Quarter and quarter sequential perspective is organic, but I mean relative to March 2022 versus you know March 2023. That is what I'm trying to understand the seven seven and a half percent for for the five point five percent constant currency. You know how much of that would be organic? Again, Excluding uh, MST and Salesforce. Yeah, uh, we don't give this information separately, but uh, what I can confirm is in this quarter, it's 5.3% uh, predominantly is driven by the organic. Uh, as Hizal mentioned, you know, there's a seasonality in the Salesforce business in this quarter. So you can count most of the growth has come from the organic business. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are reconnecting the management line. Request you all to please stay connected. Thank you. Gentlemen, thank you for patiently waiting. The line for the management is reconnected. Till it's your line is in talk mode, please go ahead with your question. Hello. Yes, it's audible, sir. Please go ahead. Hi. You know, this is Sachin Kassar here. Uh, congratulations uh, yeah. on... A Please use the handset mode. The voice is echoing, sir. Hi, this is Sachin Kassar here. Uh, congrats, Hiral and the entire master team. After many quarters, we have seen growth come back in a strong manner. So, very, very, very good set of numbers. Uh, two, three questions from my side. Uh, first was, uh, uh, you mentioned that... Uh, this is the current momentum. You are quite confident on delivering a strong above industry and industry growth. So if you could just give us some more greater insights as to what gives us this type of confidence and momentum that, uh, you know, this growth that we have seen this quarter is more sustainable. Thanks, Sachin. <clears throat> so, um, Sachin, as you know, um, there are various parts to our business. And uh, in some ways, uh, there's some uniqueness in, in each region, right? Um, we um, 
really needed to make some fundamental changes in the underlying elements of our business, uh, which uh, included, like I said, uh, our ability to strengthen our capabilities, ability to mine accounts better. Uh, so some of those underlying changes are starting to pay off. Uh, now, there are two, three metrics that uh, we look at from a leading indicators perspective, right? One is our pipeline and um, our uh, overall uptick in the level and the type of conversations that we're having, right? Uh, pipeline has, and, and the 12 months order backlog uh, has definitely gone up. So that is one part of the conversation uh, or one, one part of the data point. The second part is that in the areas that we are good at, uh, which includes our Oracle cloud business, our Salesforce business, our UK public sector digital engineering business, uh, we are continuing to diversify and see larger deals and opportunities, in some cases multi-tower deals in the con uh, context of Oracle, in the context of Salesforce, larger opportunities beyond what we've delivered in the past, and also uh, some indications of um, you know, mining those accounts better that we are present in, right? So this is the second second sort of leading indication that we're looking at. And uh, third is uh, we've, we've made some uh, strong hires, uh, not just at the leadership level that I mentioned earlier, but also at next level uh, and, and at an account level in some cases, at a domain level in some cases. Uh, so we believe that uh, some of the, the capability investments, which we continue to need to make, uh, but, but some of the capability investments, uh, we can need to continue to strengthen our propositions. But some of those uh, progress that we've made in addition to getting the right people uh, will position us better uh, going forward as well. So looking at uh, pipeline, uh, our order backlog, uh, our mining, our ability to mine, if you look at uh, greater than 1 million accounts, um, you know, uh, two years back, uh, we were uh, about 25 or 30 accounts. Now we are 60 accounts, right, or 61 to be specific. Um, similarly, we want to continue to move up the ladder on 3 million accounts, 5 million accounts, 10 million accounts. Um, and uh, Middle East and, um, you know, the, the uptick that we've seen uh, continues to look strong even going into FY24. So in addition to our largest markets, which is UK and uh, US, uh, the third uh, geography leg uh, continues to continues to fire. So th those those are the three four things such in that is that is giving us confidence. Sure. So second question was on the U.S. market. So uh, this quarter we have seen some. Uh, please use the handset mode, sir. The audio is echoing. Yeah. Second question was on the U.S. business. Uh, so this quarter we have seen some uh, pressure in margins. So one, is it because of uh, some investments that we have done? Are there some write-offs or is it in general pressure on pricing if you could quantify? Uh, second, uh, see, uh, it's, it's predominantly because uh, of the, as, as the investment continues to be made in the geography because that's, that's the growth we want to see in America specifically, right? So as the growth comes back, uh, as these are alluded into, we see the margin coming back to the normal level. Sure. And have we now started to see our ability to bid in larger bids in the U.S. business? Because that is very critical for us to grow the U.S. business and achieve the balance that we have, uh, you know, targeting the next four to eight quarters to achieve the mix between U.S. and uh, non-U.S. business. So, Yeah, so Sachin, we uh, definitely have that as part of the, the strategy. Um, we have... Uh, taken proactive propositions to a few of our clients. Um, we have a seat in the table on, on few customers that we want to make sure that we try that with. Our um, strength, though, will be in accounts which are between 1 billion to 10 billion companies, right? That's the range that we believe are, are sweet spots, and, and even in some cases, 2 to 7 billion, right? Um, that's where we feel that uh, we can make the biggest uh, impact. Uh, in some cases, the customers are actually breaking down their overall strategy, sourcing strategy into smaller chunks, which um, in a way is beneficial to us. So we don't want the, necessarily the entire IT real estate, right? Uh, 
uh, for bidding because we may not uh, be successful in those type of bids. The success that we are seeing in some of the leading indicators in our, in our existing accounts, right? So we have seen 5 million deals, 7 million deals. We have some of those in the pipeline as well. Uh, but in terms of larger than 10 million deals, it's an aspiration that we have in FY24. We are picking certain specific areas and in industries uh, where we can take that proposition to, like I mentioned, healthcare in particular. And uh, we're trying it out with a few of our top existing accounts. Uh, but we want to show that and demonstrate that with the results. So we will keep you uh, and the teams posted uh, as we start having those uh, wins in the U.S. Uh, but but conversations are definitely uh, moving up the ladder. Uh, our relationships are getting stronger in certain accounts. Uh, and we have to now uh, take that to the next level in terms of some of the cost take out deals. So fair to assume that in FY24 in the U.S. market, uh, the average deal size should be much larger than FY23 and overall order intake or order win should be much better than FY23. Yes. Okay. Uh, one uh, bookkeeping question for Arun. Uh, if you see the cash flow from operations this year, it has come down to 100 crores versus 270 crores last year. So is there some one-off in that? And that looks quite low. So how do we see the uh, cash flow from operations? Because this year, you know, uh, almost 700 crores uh, is gone from the balance sheet because of investments. And the net debt has gone up quite a bit. Uh, though it is, we are still net cash, but, you know, net, net uh, cash outflow is much larger than cash flow from operations. So if you could... Comment on that, and how do we see FY24 in terms of cash flow from operations? So, uh, Sachin, uh, very good observation. So, yes, uh, this year we have seen some reduction in the cash flow from operations, and it's kind of reflected in our DSOs going up to 93 days. So, there's an internal team which we have created who is working very dedicated. We don't see any risk into those numbers, and you'd have seen 98 was last quarter. We have brought it down to 93 days. There's a continuous effort. So our endeavor is to uh, operate free cash flow in the range of 75 to 80% uh, is, is, the, is, the, is the range we operate internally. And we believe next year we'll come back to that range. Okay. okay. And just one last question. Uh, when we see the uh, minority interest, there's only 2 lakh rupees. So that's a little confusing because we still 10% uh, is minority in case of Evo says. So is there some one-off again in that? Because that looks like a very low number for 10% minor teachers to like to be that we have wanted for in the quarterly numbers. Yeah, there, there, there are certain one-offs in that particular set of business. Uh, again, as a company, uh, is, uh, you can say it's an offsetting, but uh, between the between the entities which are subject to minorities, there's a one-off there. Doesn't impact okay. at the group level. Okay. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Sachin. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mir Manohar from Carnelian Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for giving the opportunity and congratulations on a great set of numbers. Uh, so, I mean, the crew's coming back after some point in time. Uh, largely wanted to understand on the government side of the business. I mean, uh, you mentioned the reasons uh, that has driven the growth in this particular quarter. And also, you uh, mentioned about the opportunities which are there on the government side, uh, specifically UK. I mean, I uh, just wanted to get a sense. I mean, you know, we have seen some 10% plus kind of a growth. Uh, so considering the opportunities which are there, which is on the police protection side, uh, workers' pension side, I mean, uh, do we see other cells uh, maintaining your... Manohar, uh, please use the handset mode, sir. Yeah, uh, it's audible. Yeah, yeah, you're audible. Carry on. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So, I mean... Uh, uh, we, 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 heard, we heard most of the questions, so please go ahead, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. So, I mean, you mentioned about the untapped opportunity. So, just largely wanted to understand, uh, will this growth rate sustain or how should we build uh, the government business uh, kind of a growth or a great come of uh, once again back to a uh, 2% kind of a growth number? Uh, so, how should we see that part of the business? Uh, that was my first question. Uh, and second question was on the uh, NHS side. I mean, you know, the two deals uh, which are there. I mean, what kind of probability should we assign of these deals uh, getting ramped up for us? Uh, so I mean, you know, what should be the probability that uh, one should consider or one should just uh, drop off these deals uh, even in FR24? <laughs> so um, let me start with the second question, Mahir. Uh, NHS, um, in reality, we believe that there is, uh, uh, you know, a higher probability, but we have assumed that the probability is very low. And, and again, we've taken that conscious call to be very conservative, given what we've seen in the last nine months with NHS. Uh, so until we see 
one deal uh, spend coming up uh, we're going to take a conservative approach uh, but but i do believe that uh, things will open up right uh, during the year um, there is uh, <clears throat> there is different parts of the healthcare ecosystem uh, within uh, uk health and may not be in the same areas uh but but it might be in such slightly tangential and surround areas that we might uh, also see some potential growth um the uh, growth levels uh, that that you've seen in terms of uh, quarter four did have uh, help from both number of working days and currency like i mentioned so that level of uh, growth quarter and quarter uh, will be difficult to sustain in the uk public sector uh, having said that uh, like i mentioned earlier in the three or four different areas Uh, we do see opportunities uh, to further strengthen uh, our presence both in some of the existing accounts and even diversify in a few other institutions so um, it it continues to be a key part of our uh, uh, growth strategy and business uh, going forward the short sure, got it that's it for my side thank you thanks thank you Ladies and gentlemen, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the question queue. The next question is from the line of Darshit from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello. Am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Hi. So, thanks for taking my questions. I actually just needed a, a ballpark view on revenue going forward in the next two three years, and also I heard that you are. Uh, wanting to bring the ebitda and pat margins back to previous levels but uh, could you specify some time frame say probably how many years it will take to uh, you know come back to those levels thank you <clears throat> so so darshit i think um, we have um, um you know we have a 3 to 4 year view in terms of how we are looking at the business as part of um, the strategic priorities that we had laid out uh, fy23 has been challenging um, you know in 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 the couple of quarters prior to this uh, but we feel um, we are very pleased with the quarter 4 uh, results and and momentum uh so so uh we feel that fy24 will be a stronger year um and and uh, as we look at the overall opportunity in front of us um uh, in terms of the sectors and the regions that we operate in um we continue to uh, believe that we will uh, be at industry leading or or a few percentage points above industry in terms of year on year growth right um our um, margins and operating ebitda in particular um, is in that range that that we feel comfortable right now there's always going to be some room for improving which uh, we would like to uh, uh, reinvest back in the business um, and then demonstrate consistent quarter on quarter as well as year on year growth for a few quarters before we try and improve our operating ebitda to uh, you know 19 20% ranges but right now the 18% range is where we feel uh, comfortable okay all right thank you thank you the next question is from the line of pratap maliwal from mount intra finance please go ahead uh, hello can you hear me yes Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Thanks for taking my questions. I think most questions have been answered. But I think uh, last quarter you called out that there's been some uh, greater than five million deals, and a couple of them are maybe in the pipeline for Q4. So is there any update here? Have we won any of those deals? Any traction on that front? Yeah. Actually, <clears throat> we've um, won uh, uh, two of them. Uh, one in uh, America. These are both Oracle deals. which uh, had longer cycles uh, than we expected uh, but the manufacturing company that is referring to earlier uh, interestingly in both those deals uh, if you recall in in the invested day roughly about a year back uh, last year uh, many of you attended in person uh, we had uh, showcased our investment in non linear platforms and non linear solutions it was it was part of a medium to longer term strategy where we believed that 
architecting certain platforms and solutions that can give non-linear growth will be a key part, uh, you know, going forward. Uh, so that's uh, uh, we're pleased to sort of update that both these deals, um, you know, one in a utilities company in Australia and second a manufacturing company in US had this non-linear component. In fact, uh, we have another solution uh, called Workforce Scheduler, uh, which is popular in the healthcare space, which is also gaining traction. Um, so so uh, there's another deal uh, which we had referred to, which, which is what you're referring to, uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, in, in terms of uh, greater than 5 million, uh, it is with a healthcare customer. Uh, so that is something that we are expecting to close in the next few weeks. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, the good news is that we've not uh, lost any of the ones that we referred to. Uh, deal cycles are, are definitely taking longer. Uh, and uh, out of the three, we actually have won two uh, and uh, are expecting to uh, win the next one uh, in the next few weeks. Thank you. We'll take the next question from the line of Samir Dosani from ICICI Prudential AMC. Please go ahead. Hey, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations on a great set of numbers. Uh, just want to understand uh, utilization specifically. So, you know, this number, we have seen a very good improvement now. Uh, now, how should we think about this number? Is there some scope for improvement and uh, how how should we understand this uh, in the context of margin improvements? Because 17 to 19 is the range, if I'm not wrong, that we have spoken about. So, is there, is there uh, are there other levers? To at least go the higher bend of the margin. Thanks. Yes, uh, yes, there is a room for improvement in utilization, and we are working towards it. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, there will be gradual improvement, and that's what has been reflected in last two quarters. There will be further improvement down the road as well. In terms of margin improvement, yes, utilization is not only the lever, there are subcontractors conversion, and, and there are other operating levers as well which we are working on. However, at the same time, we need to keep investing back into the business for the purpose of growth, right? Including capabilities, getting into the sales and other channels at the same time. So our endeavor is to maintain the margin around this similar range in the short term. And as Hiral mentioned, like, you know, in the mid to long term, our endeavor will to further keep improving it and come back to the old levels. Yeah, and, and uh, Samir, the only thing I would add is, um, we did make a, a tough call in the middle of the year to continue to onboard freshers okay. into the system when okay. some of our competition stopped that or, or reduced that. We actually did not do that. So you saw a hit in the utilization in the previous couple of quarters. Now, with disciplined execution and moving many of them into billable roles, which we would continue to do, you're seeing some of the benefits of that both in terms of utilization as well as in terms of revenue growth. So it was a tough call that, that, that we had made in the middle of the year, but it is paying off right now. Uh, so fresher intake and making sure that we run the internships and training programs uh, is an important part of our strategy, right? So that we can improve the overall pyramid structure, um, do more offshoring, as well as as deals become a little bit more managed services in terms of our business mix, uh, that will also help us uh, going forward. Also, second thing, uh, thanks, thanks for this. Uh, and second, when you look at industry growth, what is the time, What is your benchmark in terms of industry growth? Uh, is it is it is it top ten players, top fifteen players? What is the benchmark when you say you know uh, industry growth plus a uh, couple of percentage points is our our end year? Thanks. <clears throat> yeah. So there are um, the tier one and the larger Indian IT services players which all of you know, um, the big seven or eight players. And then there are mid cap and uh, small cap uh, combination of, uh, you know, 10 to 15 players that we typically benchmark against, right? Um, what we've seen um, with various external uh, reports, and some of you are the experts in this, uh, is, is that typically um, in the range of seven to nine percent, uh, is, is what we've been hearing for some of the, the larger industry players. Uh, with the mid-cap uh, and the smaller players doing slightly better than that uh, in terms of the range of industry growth. So that's what we are benchmarking against as a baseline, and we uh, aspire to do more than that, right, in terms of 
uh, the industry, uh, given our size is on, on the smaller side of uh, the, the mid cap or small cap. Um, so so, so while 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 saying that, right, there is still uh, continued uncertainty in 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 the market and and the environment and. Um, you've seen some of the, the results that have been announced, um, and you know we obviously will wait and see how some of the other competitors do. Um, but we feel comfortable uh, that the investments that we made in the business, the leadership that we brought in uh, on board in the last uh, few months, uh, position as well, right, for that industry leading. Yeah, sorry. Good. Correct. So it's a combination of tier one plus mid small all players, not just bigger players. Understood. Understood. All right, thanks, thanks. That's it from my side. All the best, team, and congratulations again on the great set of numbers. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vikas Vijay Vargya from Health Tech Services. Please go. Ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, one thing I want to be understand. Uh, this is purely the bookkeeping portion. It's a uh, our credit card is uh, slightly big. Uh, it's a decrease by the 160 crores or number is there, I believe. Any specific reason and what is basically in the creditors' line, trade paper. Again, is the uh, timely payments of the creditors, uh, which uh, which is which is the nature of it, and also sometimes what happens, you get into longer term engagements, and the timing of it could relate to you know closer to March. And the payments are not due, and you don't, uh, you know, you make the payment as it becomes due in May or June, uh, could be the reason. Uh, it's again business as usual. We don't see any significant reason as such, unless the timing of certain contracts which you would have entered with the vendors uh, may be different between last year and current year. But what is the component is there? Is there what is the nature of the creditors or trade payments is there? It's again as usual. Uh, you 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 are doing a lot of procurement of capex items. It could be lap uh, laptop. It could be IT IT software which we buy for our employees. We are six thousand uh, in the range of six thousand employees, right? So we have to make multiple procurements. There are facilities. Uh, there are rentals, uh, so on and so forth. Any uh, any kind of the commissions or professionals are in this one. There would be subcontractors uh, where you'd be outsourcing certain part of services. There are individual subcontractors, even they will become part of this. Okay. Any third party, and we are not including any. Yeah, it's, it's predominantly third party. There would be certain accounting related disclosure to be included in a trade paper, but predominantly is third party. That because of our. Uh, Sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Vijay Varga. The audio is breaking. Is the audio? Your audio is breaking. Please repeat your question. Hello. Is audible? Yes. Uh, the second part is that the inflow is increased as compared to the security. It's still breaking. Sorry, we are not able to hear you. Oh, is it actually? Sorry, Mr. Vijay Variga, the audio is breaking from your line. As there is no response from the line, we'll, uh, as there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. <coughs> All right. Um, I think, um, as as always, um, we highly value the interaction and and the questions. Um, like I mentioned, uh, FY23 uh, was challenging. Uh, but we are very pleased to end with a strong note and solid in-quarter execution of Q4 uh, that is reflected in our results. Uh, the changes and the uh, investments that we've made in the last year uh, has set a good foundation for us to uh, develop confidence in the outlook going forward. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the entire Mastic team, who we call Masticers. Uh, for their commitment and uh, continued focus on, on the customer. Um, the uh, investors and analysts who have joined the call today as well as the interactions that we have had through the year has helped a lot. Uh, we value your feedback and uh, support and, and uh, trust in Mastic. Um, we will continue to keep you posted uh, on the progress um, on our strategic priorities 
and uh, looking forward to an exciting FY24. Uh, so with that, uh, thank you once again and good evening. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Tech Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.